Visit us at Eduvo. Thank you for calling Eduvo. Now that we had some fun with column, main axis alignment, and cross axis alignment, let's take a step back and let's continue working on our actual application that we want to have. For that, we of course need our chart at the top, and below that, we need our list of transactions. Right now, we have no way of adding transactions through our app. Of course, we'll add such a way later. But since we don't have that at the moment, let's add a dummy list of transactions, shall we? And for this, in my widget here, I will add a final list. And now the question is, what is a transaction? And we could use a map here, because a transaction is certainly not just a string or a number. It's not just that the value, the, the amount we spend, it's also not just the title. It's the combination of the title and the value we spent. And we could absolutely use a map for that. It's basically what we did in the first app in this course. There we used a map. A map would be fine, but here I actually want to take a different route and create my own class and therefore my own object blueprint for this. For that in the lib folder, let's add a new file and I'll name this transaction.dart because in there I'll define how a transaction should look like. This will be a normal class and now this will be named transaction and it will not extend stateless or stateful widget because this transaction class here will just be a blueprint for a normal Dart object, which I want to use in my Dart code. I don't want to use this as a widget that should be rendered. We'll of course also add other custom widgets throughout this module, but this here is not one of them. Instead here, I simply want to define how a transaction should look like. And therefore here, I'll first of all define which properties or fields, which variables a transaction has. Now let's say each transaction has an ID, which is actually a string, something like that, a unique ID that identifies each transaction. In addition to that, a transaction will certainly have a title, which, uh, well, allows us to find out what this amount we spent is all about. And that is also a string. And of course, we also need an amount. So how much did we spend on the item we have here? Now, the amount will be a number, and therefore we could use num, but I want to be more specific than that. Is it an int or is it a double? Well, obviously that depends on your requirements and what you want in your application. But I'd say for, for money that we spend, a double makes more sense because we often have amounts like 99.99. .99. So here I'll have my property of type double. Now, last but not least, I also want to save the date on which we did our transaction, on which we made that transaction. And that will be of a special type, the type date time. Now, date time is a type that's built into Dart. It's essentially based on a predefined class Dart ships with, you could say. It's not a primitive like string or double or int or boolean. It's a bit of a more complex object, but it's nonetheless an object or a class that's built into Dart. So we don't have to define it ourselves. And here I'll name this date. So that's my property name. These are the four properties that make up a transaction. Now to conveniently create such a transaction, let's add a constructor here so that we can use the transaction here anywhere, this transaction class, to conveniently create new objects based on it. Now, to this constructor, we, of course, have to pass the values for this transaction. And there, it's up to you whether you want to use positional or named arguments. But since we have four fields that need to be populated, four properties, I'll go for named arguments because I think that makes it a bit easier to create such a transaction. We don't have to learn by heart or find out which argument goes into which position. So I'll wrap this into curly braces. This is the syntax you need to add named arguments. And then we accept the value for the ID. And you might remember, this is the syntax that Dart understands to automatically bind the argument for the name ID to the equally named property ID because of this dot. And then we do the same for this title, this amount, and of course also this date. So now we have these four named arguments which are automatically bound to their respective properties here. These properties should never change thereafter, and therefore I'll all mark them as final here 
which means their runtime constant, they get their value when this transaction is created, but the value thereafter never changes. So with that transaction class created, we can go back to the main Dart file and in the my homepage class, I'll create a list of transactions. So now we can use transaction, that class we just created, as a type here for our list. And that tells Dart that this list here, which I'll name transactions, that this variable will hold a list of transactions. That is how you should read this. It's a list of transactions. And here it's an empty list. Now, important to use the transaction class as a type here or as anything here in the main Dart file, you have to add an import. And my IDE automatically added it, but not in the best way. You should simply import dot slash transaction dot Dart. So import that newly created transaction Dart file, and that unlocks every non-private class and so on, which you have in that file. So therefore, now we can use the transaction class here. Of course, having an empty list here is not that helpful though. I want to have some transactions to start with. So here I'll add transaction using my class as a constructor now by adding parentheses. And now we have to assign an ID, a title and so on. So my ID here could be T1, it's up to you. Title could be new shoes and the amount could be, should be a double, could be 69.99. Now we haven't specified a currency here. For this application, I'll assume it's always dollars. You can of course assume any currency you want. Last but not least, we need to set a date. And here I will use date time, this built-in class, and then now, which is a constructor offered by date time that builds a new date time object based on the date time class with the current timestamp, which we'll do for now. So now we have this transaction in here, one tiny tweak in the transaction class. All these properties here are required and therefore we should add add required in front of each property. This however is not a decorator that's built into Dart. So in order for this to work, we need to import something from Flutter because Flutter is actually the framework that introduces the required decorator. We do this by importing package Flutter here in the transaction Dart file and there foundation.dart. You could also use material.dart because that internally is based on foundation.dart, but foundation.dart is in the end the file that exposes at required. So now we made sure that these are required and that we would get an error if we tried to create a transaction without one of these four properties. And with that, let's simply create one other transaction so that we have at least two display to display in our list by adding this one here and maybe here we have our weekly groceries which we bought. Maybe that cost us 16.54 or 53 and I'll also take the current timestamp here. Later of course we'll make sure that the user is able to choose the timestamp. So with that we have our list of transactions.